Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome, everyone, to the show. My name is Jason Romano. This is episode number 85 of the Sports Spectrum Podcast. And thank you for downloading and subscribing to our podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, And of course, everywhere podcasts are found, we do appreciate you clicking on that icon on the podcast app, clicking subscribe and never missing an episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast. And as always, our podcasts are found, all of them, at our YouTube page. So just go to youtube.com, click in Sports Spectrum, and you will find every single episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast, as well as a ton of other video content there and some great interviews and, and really neat stuff. Check it out over at our YouTube channel, and of course, every single piece of content that we release is found at sportspectrum.com, where you can partner with us and become a member for just $36 for an entire year, and that gets you our quarterly magazine and helps you fund and support all of the great projects we're doing here at Sports Spectrum, including the increase, including Football Sunday, and of course, including the Sports Spectrum podcast. Today's guest, this is a unique podcast, one unlike any we've done before, and it features five members of the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. Offensive lineman Stefan Wisniewski, wide receiver Torrey Smith, tight end Trey Burton, linebacker Jordan Hicks, and safety special teams ace Chris Maragos. We got to sit down with all five of these guys, including their team chaplain, Pastor Ted Winsley. And just have a conversation, a lot of fun, a lot of reminiscing, and just talking about what God did in the 2017 season for the Philadelphia Eagles leading up and then including Super Bowl 52 in Minneapolis and that amazing win for Philadelphia 41-33 over the New England Patriots and bringing a championship, a Super Bowl championship for the first time ever to the city of Philadelphia. I really like this podcast a lot. I really enjoy talking to these guys. They're all great men of God and great character guys, guys who just love each other and love the Lord. And I just hope you enjoy it. It's it's literally just me turning on the microphone and saying, okay, guys, go. What do you think? What what comes to mind? Let's talk about the 2017 season. And I just had a lot of fun. And we prayed at the end too. So hang in there all the way to the end of this podcast. And and a, a unique circumstance took place where we were able to come together all six of us, seven of us, I guess, who were standing around a table as we taped this interview in Tucson, Arizona a few weeks ago. And we closed the podcast out in a prayer, a very unique prayer, much like coming together sort of at the 50-yard line at the end of a football game. So it was pretty neat to do. So without further ado, here we go. This is episode number 85 of the Sports Spectrum Podcast with Eagles tight end Trey Burton, Wide receiver, Torrey Smith. Offensive lineman, Stefan Wisniewski. Linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And safety, Chris Maragos, along with team chaplain, Pastor Ted Winsley. All right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Take a listen. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Hey, hey, it's a lot of being here. A lot of voices. I love this. This is going to be fun. Uh, I want to start with Trey Burton. Oh, nice. Philly special. Yeah. Yeah. Got to start there, start. and then we'll kind of go back a little bit in terms of the faith aspect and all the great things that the Lord did for you guys during the season. Just the moment, the the opportunity to have uh, a platform like that, to have a play like that that you guys hadn't run all year, and just sort of that moment. Take us to that that game, that play, that moment. Yeah, coach has some guts, man. We call that. Uh, you don't really think about it, you know, when you're going in and. Um, normally during during the week in practice, you kind of have a good understanding of you know when the play is going to get called, and you kind of can see the script you know before practice and know if if it's going to get called that day and stuff. And uh, but this this game, I had no clue. You know, we were um, you know, looking back at it fourth and one. You know, we were kind of scrambling trying to get the personnel on the field and make sure the right guys were there. And I just remember like putting my head down, listening to Foles because we were on the Patriots side um, in their end zone, um, and I just I, I remember hearing Foles say Philly special. And I like, look up and I like, make eye contact with him. <laughs> and like, he, he looks at me and I'm like, all right, let's do this. And uh, just get lined up and I'm um, trying to catch, make sure I catch the first pitch from Corey. And then uh, all I saw was Foles. Like, I didn't see anybody else, no no other guy on the field, just just Foles. And he was so open and, you know, through a coach calls it a butterfly with sore feet. 
<laughs> Make sure you get it there, you know what I mean? No, 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 no
we really, like never before, just collectively spoken and unspoken, decided that we're going to live this, decided that this is going to be a culture, um, decided that this is not a religion, this is a lifestyle. And you saw that culture, the culture of love. The Bible says uh, that you'll know that you're my disciples by the love. And when I say love, just uh, love is, is inclusive. You know, oftentimes religion can feel like it's exclusive, um, but that's what I really saw in this team. These guys just coming together, loving each other, and I believe that was the foundation because when adversity took place, everybody just stepped up. Yeah. That's awesome to see. Now, Jordan, what did you see from a faith perspective with this team? Carson comes in, uh, 2016 you have your year there and a lot of growing, and then 2017 comes and you just start to see some things going on here from a spiritual perspective, not just on the field. Yeah, well, you know, since I've been here, my faith has grown tremendously, and, it, and it's a, a credit to the guys that we have, um, you know, and, and really being intentional in making faith, um, you know, the forefront and the foundation of this team. And, and just like Pastor Ted said, man, this thing really gelled by the way that, that, that we loved each other. And, um, you know, it just showed, man, we went through adversity after adversity mm -hmm. after adversity. And not once did we waver. And, and ultimately, we got stronger. Yeah, and, it's, um, it's you know, it's through that. It's through that adversity. It's through that love that really um, propelled us to where we, where we ended up. Stefan, you, st you were telling us before this, you know, we started this podcast that your fourth string in, in training camp. Suddenly, you're leading the prayer at the end of the Super Bowl and playing the whole game. Tell me, tell me about your story and take us through that. Yeah, it was it was a wild season for me. Um, you know, starting off at fourth string left guard, I really kind of, um, you know, had no idea what the season was gonna what was gonna happen. And you know, we trade one left guard away, and uh, you know, week two, our our second left guard doesn't play so good. They move to the next guy, and um, they rotate me in a little bit, and I play well. And you know, week four, I'm starting, um, and even then, kind of have to rotate for a while, and, and eventually earn the starting job. And it was just crazy, you know. Um, I had been a starter my whole career, and to kind of be on the bench and just kind of wondering why, you know, it's like, it, do I do I suck? Like, what right. like what happened? Like, am I not working hard? Like, no, none of those things are true. And it was really challenging um, just to see, you know, like what what's God doing here? Like, why is this happening? I've been faithful in my walk with Christ, um, been working my butt off for years. Kind of, you know, like where's the reward? Hmm. And um, it just it taught me a lot about you know trusting God in the in the tough times. Um, and ultimately, you know, one of the greatest things I've learned, and it might sound simple, but just no matter what you're going through, just trust God and praise God. Uh, trust God, trust that he's with you. Sometimes it feels like he's not with you, but the word says he is, so I got to believe that, even if I don't necessarily feel that. And just trust that, that God's good and that he's working things out for my good, and that's obviously in the word as well. And just praise him no matter what's going on, even when you don't want to. Just make yourself praise. It's a it's a sacrifice of praise, and it it reminds you that God is good, even if you don't necessarily believe it in that moment. Um, also, just learned that um, just keeping my eyes focused on Him and not on my circumstances. You know, when circumstances are rough, it's easy to doubt if you're going to look at your circumstances. But um, you know, the Word says in Isaiah that you keep Him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because yeah. He trusts in you. Mm. And so, if my mind's on Christ, like. I got peace. I'm good, yeah. Yeah. but um, because I trust him. But if I start looking at my circumstances, all of a sudden I start doubting. I start questioning. I lose that peace. But uh, and then your circumstances kind of change, though. You know, all of a sudden you're 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 starting, and you're in a Super Bowl, and mm -hmm. you know this whole thing is changing. So what's happening there inside your inside your mind? It's uh, you know you're still praising, but now all of a sudden it's like <laughs> it's easier to praise, you know, yeah, it is. Um, right? But um, it's um, it was it was crazy, and it was just for me it was just a validation that you know like I was right, like God was with me, and um, just a validation that you know God does reward those who earnestly seek Him, and um, it's just uh, it was just awesome to be on the other end of it, in the midst of it, it's tough, but at the end you see the the whole thing God was doing. And I thought it was really wild because um, whether Wiz knew it or not, I believe that God used it as a platform, uh, just the struggle. Uh, using the adversity, him having to go through something. Because I remember Brandon Brooks started, uh, one of the guys on the team, one of the, the other O-line, started really drawn, being drawn to you. And uh, I don't even know, you know, I talked to him a lot, but he often just talked about just your example and seeing your faith and that how that kind of 
drew him in and helped him to be able to deal with his anxiety uh, and just the things that he was going through. So it's just amazing. Like, we, we really never know. You know, yeah. when we say, God, use me, yeah. you don't know what that looks like. So it was really cool to see. I really believe God used your ability to, to really just persevere through a difficult situation that you didn't even understand but not realizing that you had guys that were watching you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and to chime in on that, I know there's a ton of, of amazing storylines that God put in place. Um, but Wiz's, man, I remember, you know, we have our daily or our nightly um, Saturday nights. Um, we get together as a group and we pray on different things and, um, you know, get in the word and just talk about what's going on in life. And, you know, we were all there when Wiz was, was sharing his thoughts and in his, in his, in his heart and, you know, just having the ability to um, have guys to lean on, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy the impact, you know, and, and for us to help Wiz get to this point and for, you know, for him to be able to lean on us during those tough times and us to be able to lean on him during our tough times, you know, the storylines just are incredible, yeah. you know, and, and it's just there's so many different ones, and God used Wiz in an incredible way um, through that story. And there were, there were multiple times during the season uh, that Tori and I talked, you know, because mm-hmm. we were in a really similar situation as he was. You know, we weren't playing as much as we thought we were going to play or wanted to play, and, um, you know, it was, just, it was a tough time for him and I as well. Um, but then at the end of the day, you know, you're winning. Um, team's doing really well, you know, so – what are you really disappointed about? You know, right. so you yeah. kind of got to check yourself. You yeah. Know, to do I is is it more important for me to play and get stats and lose or win? You know what I mean? <laughs> or is it more important for the team to win? And so uh, we had that conversation a couple times, you know, throughout the season, and it was definitely a battle that we had to go through as well. I think it's. I mean, I think it's everybody. You know, yeah, honestly, so you know, yeah. me and Chris, me and Chris, the same way. Yeah, yeah, we all had in some way had to sacrifice and and really put God's glory over the whole thing. You know, over our, our selfish desires and. Um, you know, it's awesome, man. We, I sit down with Pastor Ted all the time, and, you know, as much as we want to be out there helping the team right. win and you see all this success and all these different things happening, um, you know, you can't deny that God's hand is directly <laughs> yeah. on this team. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't deny that. it. And yeah. it's like, how can I sit here and say all these things and, and have these selfish desires and, you know, when, when God's hand is, is at work? i say to you that what um, Trey said. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Like, I'm we just played an Arizona game. Mm-hmm. Trey scored on a beast fade. I somehow scored in the post. But like just at the <laughs> conversations we had, I'm calling him on the way into the facility. Like, hey, man, like, I'm right away. You've been carrying yourself. Yeah. Because, like, there's nothing about him. You would never know there was anything was on his mind. And he mm-hmm. was still the ultimate recruiter in the locker room trying to get people to follow Jesus. Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me, being a new guy in this locker room, um, just seeing the presence, even from younger guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you can draw from everyone, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's looking way down there and seeing Wiz or Trey Hicks, whoever it may be, Carson. Mm-hmm. We literally have guys spread out all yeah. throughout the locker room. Yeah, we do, man. Man. Each and every area, you're going to find <laughs> some culture. That's yeah. the deal. Yeah. And so to see that um, and know that the biggest takeaway was how, again, it's almost the way that most people are drawn, at least how I was drawn. I'm drawn in by the way uh, real Christians carry themselves, mm-hmm. not by the people who don't practice what they preach or what they're teaching you. Mm-hmm. And so to see that on our team, seeing guys walking the walk, especially in the position that we're in, uh, it was guys like Trey who are heavy influence in that area. But it was also cool. I mean, you look at every position on the team, there's a, at least one believer. There's yeah. a lot of positions, there's multiple believers, you know, and that. From the just, coaches down. Yeah, from the coaches <laughs> right. down too, yeah. you know, So it's, it's pretty special, you know, to be a part of that. Yeah, we're talking to the uh, Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles here on the Sports Spectrum podcast, Trey Burton, Jordan Hicks, Stefan Wisniewski, Tori Smith, Chris Maragos, team chaplain, Pastor Ted Winsley. I want to ask you, Chris, uh, adversity. Yeah. We'll start with you. And you started to talk about this before the podcast, about just all the adversity that took place with this team and the injuries. You were one of the first. Um, take us back to the moment when you got hurt. You know, first time I think you've been hurt in your career. Yeah. Tell me about what was going through in your mind and just kind of the your, what was what was hurting in your soul? Yeah, no, that's that's good. Yeah, I mean, th- I've been playing tackle football since I've been seven. This is the first time I've ever missed a game. Wow, wow. I'm 31. You know, so that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's nice, bro. Right? Okay. Yeah, that yeah. is. Put your arm snap the like heavy. But uh, you know, it was uh, you know, it was a freak play. You know, I just uh, you know, I got hit in my knee and my knee bent back, and I knew it was torn right away. I mean, it was 
And I'm laying on there. Trey's got a funny story if you want to hear it. <laughs> I do want to hear it. Please. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I kind of know he's hurt, you know, because he's on the ground. Kind of know. Yeah. You know him. <laughs> the, closer, the closer I get to him. I'm done. Only brothers can talk like yeah. this. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Because no, I'm on the ground and. Like, it's, like, hilarious because I'm – it's funny now. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm laying on the ground looking up, and my knee hurts so bad. And I don't know what happened because I didn't – you don't see yourself get hit. Yeah. You do, I mean, you whap, down. whole – yeah, I mean. And then, uh, like, I'm just in pain, and I'm I'm doing what Trey just – Perfect. He said it. He said it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Hey, so I'm over here. This is the worst part. I'm over here wailing like that, like miserable. And I'm sitting there in my mind, and I thought to myself, I sound horrible. (laughs) But I couldn't stop doing it. It was just like (laughs) – it was bad. But anyways, you know, uh, like on a more serious note, I remember laying on the ground, and like I was sitting there in my whole career. I'm like, all right, Lord, like whether it's good, whether it's bad, you get the glory or whatever it is. And I was laying there, and I literally was looking up in the sky, almost like in heaven. <laughs> it sounded like I was going to heaven. Yeah, it sounded like I was on my deathbed at that point. Oh but, my uh, gosh. And I'm looking up, and I can I just remember verbally saying, like, all right, Lord, if this is it, like, let your will be done. And, mm. you know, like, and, and I'm at peace with whatever it is. And, you know, I'm laying there. Trainers came out. And first thing I said, I was like, hey, man, my ACL is gone, bro. Like, it's got, like, my whole knee is gone. I didn't even want to look down, right? Mm. And, um and they do the little knee check, like, no, nah, ACL's good, bro. And I, I'm like, look up, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no way. And they're like, yeah, yeah, this, that, oh, that's good, too. And they're like, hey, we think it's your PCL. And I'm like, what is a PCL? So I'm like, oh, that's one of those ones that just healed in, like, a couple weeks, which is not. So I <laughs> ended up having to get reconstruction surgery on it, and it's mm. miserable. But uh, but that, that, that was a, a weird time. But I knew that through that, uh, you know, difficult circumstance that, you know, God has shown himself so faithful throughout my career. I mean, I got—I yeah. I didn't have one school offer me out of high school. I, was, I walked on in two different colleges. I didn't get a scholarship to my fifth year of college. Mm. Uh, I was undrafted, you know, and to play at that point, I was in my eighth year, you know, to look at how God had literally had his hand on every point in my career, I'm like, why not now, you know? Right. And so for people to be like, oh, are you upset? Are you mad? No, I'm not. Like, like, like. I don't know if people are offended that I'm like happy walking around, but yeah. I'm happy. I'm not happy with my knee, but I'm like, this is right where I need to be. It's a joy. And yeah. the Lord taught yeah. me so much through the surgery, which was really difficult. The recovery process, the first couple weeks after were really difficult. But the Lord was just drawing me more and more and refining more layers. And for that, I'm thankful. Jordan, Jordan a week later, it happens to you. Yeah. Take so us I, back to the moment. Yeah, so I had, I had been dealing with my – I had rolled an ankle, got cut by an offensive lineman, the Giants game, which I think was like game three. And ever since then, I was dealing with an ankle injury. It was my left ankle. And just over and over again, each week, I would, like, come out at halftime um, and not be able to finish the game. And I remember the Carolina game, it was at halftime. It was, like, two plays before halftime. I tweaked my, my right calf. Mm-hmm. And um, I go in there. I'm, I'm done for the game. Chris comes in, obviously, like, bawling <laughs> his eyes out. Right? <laughs> this, dude, this, dude is, this dude is a mess. Chris comes in there and he's, you know, I'm oh like, whoa, gosh. I'm all right. Like, I'm good. And, and, I'm uh, not that bad. No. Yeah, me man. and Chris, it's, it's funny, actually. Our, the, the, the day we get back uh, to Philly, <laughs> me and Chris are going through all our MRIs, doing PRP together, doing all these different things together. So we're spending all this time together. Um, he actually finds out he's having a kid that day, the, the day it's after, good. something like that. Right. Um, just a, a faithful time, like you said. But... For me, you know, it was we had a Monday night game after that Thursday night game, and um, I knew going in that I wasn't I wasn't 100 percent. But I had actually asked the doctors that because I, I had torn an Achilles in college, and I asked the doctor I was like, Doc, you know, I really do not I do not want to tear my Achilles. Like that's the one thing I don't want to do. He's like, you know, I got I got his opinion. He said it's just your uh, calf, and then you know we got a second opinion, and he said it was my calf too. Achilles was okay. Went out there and played second play of the game. Uh, boom, pop! I, I turned the cover with a guy, and, wow. um, mm-hmm. pop! And I knew, I knew it exactly. I had done it before. I knew exactly what it was. Um, and yeah, it was it was a tough time. You know, I, I go in the I go in the locker room. My wife meets me there. Um, you know, and there's a lot of emotion. Um, but immediately, it's crazy because Jason Peters walks in there, and Jason Peters actually blew his knee out as well. Um, and I see the way he's handling it himself, and you know. Um, he was having kind of a tough time, 
Um, and it just it just kind of sobered me up a little bit out of my out of my state and like man it's not about me you know I've got guys that need me right now mm-hmm. and um, you know through the through the whole process process man I've I've been been lucky to have guys like Chris and Carson and um, you know dudes who are, are solid solid guys that we're able to pour into each other um, we talk about it all the time sitting in breakfast by ourselves me and Chris <laughs> dude this would be terrible if it was we're just one of us yeah. you know what I mean Invisible, and and God's been faithful through it man Gracious, we, he's man. our our relationship yeah. has, has grown stronger. Um, there's a lot of things that are coming out of this time, and obviously, you know, our, our, our team has done an amazing job. So, Well, it definitely thing. talks about the, the character of the team and even, like, from a football perspective, the depth of the team, the way that you guys – the way it was constructed last year. And, uh, you know, Car- uh, I was going to say Carson, but, Stefan, I'll ask you just when you saw Carson go down. Because it's one thing – I'm not trying to make light on any other sure. position. I oh, promise yeah, you that. Yeah. But you're talking about the quarterback, <laughs> the, quarterback. Yeah, the leader. Yeah. The guy was an MVP candidate. That's big. And he goes down. In a game that you watch the play a few times, and you're like, oh, man. I think the play was called back, actually, if I remember. He scored a touchdown on a run play. Yeah, it was yeah. called back. Yeah. You know, you're on the field there. What's going through your mind when you see your guy go down and then you find out what, what – what it really means like this is the rest of the season he's done yeah it's obviously really scary you know when your starting quarterback gets hurt and at first we didn't quite know what it was but you know in the locker room after the game we kind of knew it was it was probably going to be season ending Mm. and um it was weird the day it happened because on that day we clinched the division title Mm. yeah and it was like way early it was like you know beginning of december first team in the nfl to clinch and at that point, I think as a team, like our, at that point, our goals were really, really high. Our goals were like we could be the best in the league, we could win a Super Bowl, and our quarterback gets hurt, and it's like we didn't like we didn't want to change our goal. We didn't want to just give up and be like, oh well, season's over, too bad, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course not. That's where you have to keep going. Yeah, sure. you have to, but you don't have to keep believing though. Yeah. You can kind of you can true. lower your expectations yeah, and just true. go to work <laughs> yeah. and just punch your t- card and, and clock out, but. I think we all really kept believing and kept working at the same level. And we had a lot of trust in our, in our backup quarterback, Nick Foles. A lot of guys on the team had been there, you know, three or four years ago when Foles had that unbelievable season. Yeah. So they had seen what he was capable of. And, you know, we knew that we had a strong defense, strong O-line, great, you know, skilled players on offense. And um, we knew that, that we could keep winning with Foles. And um, it's crazy, too, when you think about it, like, you know, uh, our starting quarterback, who is you know a very outspoken, you know, bold Christian, um, with his faith, goes down, and it's like you can't stop us. Like Andy Mills, like you can't stop me. You knock out one Christian quarterback, we got another one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah. We don't yeah. care. Yeah. Don't care. Next man up. Yeah. 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 Wait. Not just anybody. Yeah. 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 Like you knock out three Christians, <laughs> like we got four more. Like you can't stop us. Isn't man. that the Bible? That's what the words. Well, once, yeah. once you guys, these two guys are really. They, they talked about it many times during the season. Um, once you guys talk about the spiritual warfare. And like stories like Gideon, you know, you brought up a couple times, and I know Ted, you've talked about it, you know, a bunch, you know, with a couple guys. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, I think again, um, like you said, realizing that believing is not what you do when everything goes well. I mean, that's not how you determine whether you believe or what your faith, where your faith is. It's when, when everything goes bad, you know. And uh, also realizing, I remember, you know, Trey called me. I forget. Well, it was even way. It was before Carson went down. Uh, but when, when guys started going down, you were yeah. like, yo, like, what's happening? <laughs> like, is this warfare? And I was like, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, because, again, you know, last year when we started making open displays and we started saying, hey, we're going to live for God. Mm-hmm. We're not just going to be believers. Right. We're going to give him glory. Um, you really saw everything begin to ratchet up. Yeah. yeah. Well, and not even that, too, but it's like there's this misconception that, like, good things are just supposed to happen to Christians. That's right. And yeah. it's like the way God set this whole thing up this year was like Christian after Christian after Christian were going down. Yeah. But yet we were shorthanded, but yet God got so much more glory sure. because look what he was able to accomplish through, quote, unquote, the least of these or what, the, the backups or That's it. the guys who were filling in roles. And so it's like it's just cool to see how, like, God gets the glory through all those things. and. And, um, you know, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean good things are going to happen to you. Right. you know? Just like, the opposite. Quite the opposite. Yeah. Quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah, in this life you will have tribulation. No question. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Wiz. Bring yeah, it. and like, uh, <laughs> like it, Ghost dude. just said, we, um, we had been talking about this as guys were going down that um, I think I said at first in a prayer before the game um, that 
this really felt a lot like the story of Gideon. Mm -hmm. um, it's in Judges six and seven. Yeah, and um, it's an amazing story. It's it's really about it's about underdogs. This is what Gideon's about. Gideon's the ultimate underdog, and you know people talk about us as as the underdogs. Pastor's wearing a dog on his shirt Let's as, go, as we speak. Come on, baby. <laughs> um, but the story of Gideon, in short, is you know Gideon has uh, God tells him to lead this army against Israel's enemies and. Gideon has 32,000 soldiers, and God says, now nah, you got too many soldiers. Yeah. He said, if you guys win, you're going to get the glory. You go send some soldiers home. And so they sent some soldiers home. They still have 10,000. God says, now nah, you still got too many. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to get the glory. Send some more soldiers home. So now they got 300 guys <laughs> left against this massive army. It said you couldn't even count. And, um, you know, the moral of that story I take out of it is God says, you know, 300 plus me is all you need. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even one man plus God is all you need. In that case, God said, you know, 300 plus me is all you need. And, you know, we, uh, one of our mantras as a team is we all we got, we all we need. Well, you know, we started off the season with one 53-man roster. A lot of those guys go down, some great players. Um, I think God was saying, you know what, the, the 53 you had at the end, even with all those, those great players gone, that 53 plus God was all you needed. Yeah. And um, I almost hesitated to say this earlier, but, like, you know, we really all felt God's favor was on our team. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's something you don't want to throw out casually. But yes. yeah. we felt that, and that was real. And here looking at the other end, it, it's really hard it's to real. deny that that yeah. was real. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I could feel that at different times. I remember when Marcus got baptized before the Carolina game. We're all praying. He gets baptized. And I could just feel God's presence in that room. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way we can lose tomorrow. Yeah. Sure. There's no yeah. way. Like, yeah. And that's had nothing to do with football at all. It's yeah. just like. God is with this team in a mighty way, and if God's with us, who can be against us? Yeah. And the reality is, is that favor is not luck. You know, favor is a byproduct of dedication and obedience. Mm -hmm. So whenever you dedicate yourself to God and you obey him, he'll be with you, and, and his power can be seen for his glory. So, again, I, I think that's why some people, you know, sometimes you get afraid to say that because you think, you know, oh, we're saying something different or something negative about the other team, but it really, or other people, it really is true. When you dedicate yourself and when you're obedient, God will favor you. Yeah. Tori, you came in. One of the new guys, yeah. and I, I remember just being on social media and seeing some of the tweets, and you were just like, "I'm so thankful to be a part of this team," and seeing a lot of just the the praise you were kind of throwing back towards your teammates. Just can you just describe what you walked into back in July and August, and then the culmination, obviously, of winning another Super Bowl, your second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You won one with Baltimore, but just what you saw coming in and kind of how it all played yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, I knew coming in that this was a, a team that had potential, mm -hmm. um, which is where I definitely wanted to go to a team that had a chance to win. And uh, I was really blown away um, beyond that, knowing that for me, I tell, I was telling people this long before our playoff run, like, I don't care what happens, we can lose, we cannot make it to the Super Bowl. Like, the best thing to me, <clears throat> about this season beyond everything was just the relationships with the men mm -hmm. in this locker room and yeah. the type of growth and accountability you had. Cause like, it's like, so like no matter what was going through your mind, highs or lows, whatever, you turn, there's someone that's gonna be there to hold you accountable. <laughs> you know? no, that's true. And yep. No matter which yeah, way you turn. No matter which way you turn, <laughs> seriously. And so, and, you. And, so, and, so, and so for me, like, I just, it's things that I'll take away forever. Like our, yeah. our talks that we would have at the hotels um, about real life, about, things that, you know, we're struggling with. I'm just trying to grow in the word and being challenged together, even though um, the IR list tried to take our entire team. <laughs> um, that room got smaller and smaller. <laughs> that's guys stopped traveling from injuries. But, I um, mean, this team is truly special. And I, I'm never the guy that's like, hey, we won because of this. I feel like there's heavy believers on the opposite team as sure, well. Of course. Sure. But, like Wiz said, there, there was something special about this. And, um, it couldn't be denied, and it will not be denied. And um, the way guys are able to impact not just only our locker room and the city of Philadelphia, but folks beyond, because you can see it all year long. Right? Yeah. One more question about sort of the spiritual side of it. You talk about, and I talk to my brother a lot about this. My brother's a big Eagles fan. I was like, the camaraderie within the team of uh, believers is awesome to watch from a believer perspective. Mm -hmm. But remembering that there are guys on a team that aren't there yet. Yeah. So how does that dynamic work? Because I've heard so many guys, even the ones who maybe don't have a faith, are talking about the brotherhood, the brotherhood, the brotherhood. So it's, there's a reflection there of the way you guys were able to love on your brothers and sisters uh, in the, team, the whole organization, but your brothers on the team who maybe not be believers. Talk about the dynamic of trying not to alienate mm -hmm. a team, but still be strong as brothers in the, in the faith. Does that make sense, Trey? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's something we had had to fight at the very beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. You know, not mm-hmm. trying not to be a clique. You know, yeah. trying not to be a group of guys who are just worrying about each other. You know, and separating the team. Yeah. Um, I would say uh, the, the biggest problem we had, I think, in a sense, was that like all of us are boys, regardless of our family. Right. You right. Know what I'm saying, like outside <laughs> of family, outside of football, like I want to hang out with Tori. I want to hang out with Wiz. I want to hang out with these two, these three guys. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, with regardless, and so. Um, we we had kind of had to be a little bit more open, you know, than we have in the past. Be intentional. Um, yeah, be intentional. I think the biggest thing out of all of it um, was us being consistent, you know, consistently being who we are instead of trying to be somebody we're not, you know, some spiritual monster or some right. theologian. Right. None of us are yep. that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm Trey, and I know what, you know, I can do and where I, you know, I, I can um, make things happen. And so just, you know, staying in my lane and then bringing people along with me um, at the same time was really, that's really my strength, and that's all I really know how to do, you know, so I'm not trying to, be somebody who no, who I'm not. How have you guys approached it, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, it's just living life with these guys, yeah. man. You yeah. know, we're, it's, it's doing what you do every day. Um, you know, I have a different influence on certain people than Trey does, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, and same as Chris and, 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 and these guys, you know. And and when I do have that influence, those are the guys I'm trying to bring along. And, and like Trey said earlier, it's, we're lucky because we have – he got his place people in every single mm-hmm. room. You know what I mean? And, and the influence is, is there. It's just a matter of us taking it upon ourselves to bring it, uh, bring, up, bring people along. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't really, you're not trying to press. We're not trying to, you know, we've had these conversations. How do we get guys? How do we, but we're not trying to do anything other than just live with these guys and, and show them that we love them and, and show them that we're brothers and we struggle just the way they struggle. And yeah. we, we do the exact, we're going through the same things. You know, if, you know there's just going through life with them. I mean, we've, we've been intentional to the point where, like, we'll say, hey, pick two guys and pray for them yeah. who aren't believers, yeah. you know, and let us know who you're praying for so mm-hmm. that we could pray for them as well yeah. and also reach out to them at the same time. I mean, I, like you said, in terms of reaching out, I've literally seen guys like, hey, uh, have you seen Ted in the locker room lately? Is mm-hmm. he believing? Do you know what's going on with him? What's he think? Yeah. And it's not attacking them by throwing the book at them and telling them everything they're doing, they're doing is wrong. It was, like, really a, a – a genuine sense of like curiosity sure. like hey like where are you at in your faith what right. do you think and I think that's probably the best thing but it wasn't it wasn't forced yeah and there's mm-hmm. been guys who I mean I know there's a young receiver in our Marcus Johnson yeah. who I've seen grow specifically because of Jordan Matthews and, mm-hmm. and these guys yeah yeah and and you see that and, and it wasn't something that was forced yeah you know right. it, like right. it was it was genuine that's what I think I've and I've been this is my seventh year I've never seen that in a locker room Wow. And I can honestly say again, having been around a long time, um, this is so different. Their well, their approach is biblical, <laughs> um, uh, it's cultural. But I remember back in the day, you know, we were trying to get TL <clears throat> to to be a part, mm-hmm. um, and finally, because basically where we have Bible study, it's in the the room where you receivers guys have your last the receivers room. Mm-hmm. So I remember, oh my goodness, years uh, we wasn't there that long. But but finally, TO is is sitting in uh, the Bible study room, which was where they had their last meeting, mm-hmm. um, sitting there, and you knew that he knew Bible study was coming. So instead of getting up, he just sat. And so the Bible study comes in, and everybody sits down. And I'm not going to say tell you who, who said it, but one of the guys uh, in the Bible study said, "Hey, Tio, I'm glad that you finally came in here because this is what you need so your soul doesn't burn in hell." Mm. And Tio looked, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, so <laughs> yeah. And and Tio looks at me, you know, and then looks at the guy, and says, "Oh yeah," and he left, you know. Mm. And and that's not what these guys do. Yeah. You know, right. it, yeah. it's just. Um, even uh, Jordan and I were talking about it last week. Even in you know at the parade, the the whole the Kelsey explosion. Yes. I really really believe because I, I was sharing. My son and I were watching. I was like, "Yo, that dude got touched by God's love." Whether wh- I don't care what his faith is, what he believes in, yeah. you could tell he was impacted by the culture, by the team, mm-hmm. and that was him emoting and sharing like, "Yo, man, I got touched by something special. This is an amazing team with amazing men." And really, that was what you heard. I believe that's what you heard. Um, a man. I don't, believe, I don't believe he's a believer, mm-hmm. but a man that was touched by God's love authentically, yeah. and he was responding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I want to end this with a couple of things. First, Steph, I want to ask you that prayer. If you, if, and, and there was so much that kind of went viral mm-hmm. from a social media standpoint, uh, not even regarding the game, but about like the faith side of things. But there was a video that Scott Hansen from the NFL Network took and shared, it was shared around social media quite a bit, and it was you, and it was the only place you could see this, I think. I don't think anybody else had this, of you leading that prayer at the 50-yard line. 
and it's powerful. It's like 45 seconds, and it's it, it's insane how powerful it is when you listen to the words that you're in that moment that you're saying. If you're listening to this and you need a prayer warrior, I'll, I'll call give you. I'll give you call the wizard. <laughs> call the wizard. It might cost you, but he will. We'll, we'll <laughs> share Steph's cell on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> no, Super Bowl Twitter. Twitter. No, 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 so we, would, we would have guys yeah. pray, you know, at, uh, before games for yeah. like the first four weeks, and he prayed like week five yeah, man, or whatever. Just, we're just and we're like, the guy. He did it the rest of the year. Nobody else. Nick Foles and Pastor Steph Herman. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, right. Yeah. So I can sure. see it. I can see it. But that moment, uh-huh. I'm just wondering the intentionality because the Super Bowl is unlike any other game and like any other week. It's just crazy chaos everywhere. Um, streamers falling from the skies. Like just, it's everybody's going trying to find a hug and everybody, and yet you stopped and you found six, seven guys, eight guys, even one Patriot player joined in in that moment. Can you just take us inside and just? As crazy and amazing as it is to win a Super Bowl, you paused for a second and you remembered to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have been dreaming about that all week. Um, you know, it, it's been my joy to to be the guy who prays for this team, mm. uh, you know, especially since we got so many believers. But um, you know, God's gifted me with with a, 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 an ability in that area. Amen. Um, so I, I get to pray in the locker room before every game, which is a blast. Um, I go just as hard as, as I did <laughs> after the game. No one has those on tape. I kind of wish I did. He's reciting whole chapters. Holy crap. This That's is good. Y'all going to get the word. Yeah, sermon on the prayer. Yeah, I preach in the prayer sometimes. But, I um, it. Um, I, I was looking forward to that, and I, I had thought a little bit about, like, man, like, I really, really hope we win this game for a lot of reasons, but I really want to pray on the 50 yard line and, and give God the glory. Mm-hmm. And so we win and I mean, the rush of emotion is, is crazy. Like you said, confetti, like there's just people everywhere and it's chaos and media and players. And, um, you know, I like hugged a couple guys, high fived and, um, and then after, you know, a couple minutes I was like, you're like, we got to pray. Like this is what we do, what we do. Yeah. Um, after every game, no matter what, we pray at the 50 yard line and this Super Bowl, like we're going to do it. And it took longer than usual to like gather the guys. You know what I mean? It was like, hey, you, oh, hey, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. You're like screaming, like people yeah. can barely hear I'm you. Hugging my wife, leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. Like, bring your wife over. I don't care. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it, it took a little while, but we got we got most of the guys together, and um, uh, just I mean, the whole point of that prayer is just to let people know, like, the only reason we were able to do this is yes. is because. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and His Holy Spirit is in us, mm. and He's touched our lives. He's given us the strength. He's given us the ability, and um, we wouldn't we wouldn't be here without Him. And uh, I just that was all I wanted to get across. I think I did, and I had uh, had a lot of energy, obviously, uh, to having just won the Super Bowl, but mm-hmm, just realizing the platform too is like uh, I just want to shout that that Jesus is is King and He's yeah. Lord and He's good and. Um, He's the reason this team was here. And I think I said, too, like, this team, like, we had no business winning the Super Bowl mm. with all those injuries. Yeah. And uh, even if even if you're not a believer, you're looking at that, like, you got to think, like, how could this team do that mm-hmm. um, with losing all those guys? And the answer is God's favor was upon us. And uh, yeah. a lot of men who followed Christ um, persevered and and, uh, and and gave all the glory to God, and he blessed us. Amen. Let's end this on a, a little bit of a lighter note. I'm going to go around the around the group here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you for one word to describe the parade, <laughs> the, the Super Bowl parade. Maybe you have a couple words. Maybe you have a story. Uh, but I'll I'll leave it open to each guy. We'll go around real quick and try to try to summarize this this in a fun way, remembering uh, the parade, Tory, Super Bowl parade. This is dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> oh, I think yes, took mine, bro. there it is. <laughs> Apparently, he took everybody. It's yeah, dangerous, yeah. Chris. Uh, intense. Intense. Okay. Oh, Trey. I, I was gonna say dangerous, highly illegal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a disaster. Okay, disaster. Disaster. Why, disaster. Why you disaster. say disaster. that? A blur. Mm-hmm. A blur? Oh, well, well, what, what'd you say? Why you say danger, I'll, Tori or Trey? Well, like, I'm, I think it was your well, one of your kids, danger right? Danger to me because I have my kid on a boat, and then you know we're going. Everything's fine. About five minutes in. There's beer cans flying oh, everywhere. Everywhere. Ooh, everywhere. Beer cans. And they think they're Foles and Carson on each side of the street. <laughs> yeah. Throwing bullets with beer cans. Wow. Uh, took my kids down. Wow. <laughs> get, 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 get. get on the ground. But it was awesome yeah. to see like the response from the fans. Like, yeah. yeah well, I'm sitting on, I'm getting interviewed with by this guy from the news station. And the cameraman's right here. And I'm sitting here talking to him. And next thing you know, I see an explosion happen. The cameraman got hit in the back of the head oh, by a beer. Oh, my gosh. By a can, beer, can, beer can. Welcome to Philly. All of a sudden. <laughs> then 
um, we then like two seconds later, we're still talking. Uh, like, you're all right. Yeah, we're good. Keep going. We're still talking, and one goes right in between our face. Oh my like, god, I'm done with this. All right. <laughs> so he goes downstairs. Whatever. You know, we 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 start doing whatever we're doing on the float, and uh, I see somebody throw a beer, and like we go to catch it, and it goes over, and it hits somebody. Someone's bent over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's square in the top of the head, it was bro. Bad. It was bad. absolutely unbelievable. There's so many guys getting hit with beers. He, he Zachary saved his life. Oh yeah, I don't. Yeah, I got his. Zachary saved his life. I yeah. saved a couple people too. <laughs> life Apart Stephen. from the danger, though, it was it was so much fun. I mean, <laughs> I've never seen. The, first of all, I've never seen that many people. Yeah. Like at one time, it was four or five million people. But like so many people, so genuinely just like happy slash relieved mm -hmm. slash like yeah, just like celebrating one thing. Sure. Like, I mean, some people. A lot, I mean, lots of people like just look, look, wanted to look you in the eye, shake your hand, and say thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And like, it good. was like, yeah, like the most, so much emotion. Like, I almost describe it. Like, it was almost like I was a doctor and I like saved their kid in mm -hmm. surgery. It was sure. Like, like thank you, like from yeah. the bottom of their heart. And uh, it was really cool to see. I mean, interrupt you real that. quick. Have you guys seen any of the YouTube reactions from the Eagles fans? Yeah, it's Absolutely. awesome. Man. I mean, it's just spend time for maybe ten minutes and sure. just Google <laughs> Eagles fans reaction to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And you saw it at the parade, but it is amazing. Well, to I was watch. in the stands with someone with with their uh, father's ashes. Oh my so, god! Yeah, he was yeah, like, I, well, I know a few ashes. <laughs> from the yeah, yeah, too. yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. Ted, real quick, one word. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Uh, three words: curse being broken. Mm, curse being broken. Yeah. Like yeah. It. That's really good. Like I keep saying it made me feel like a rock star because when you were on that float and you saw all those people just happy oh, for you, crazy. it made you feel like you know when you're a like a performer like Michael yeah. Jackson back in the day, <laughs> you got a sea of That's people crazy. just screaming and high fiving and joyful. It was, it was crazy, crazy, man. Awesome. It's crazy. Um, I would be remiss to, to close us, not to close us in prayer. You guys got your prayer warrior. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. go. Stephen. Oh, you want to close this oh, podcast? Man. I got to get my mind right for uh, <laughs> for right. prayer, but I'll, uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'll try. Here we go. I'll try. Uh, Glory. Father in heaven, you are holy. You Thank are you, all powerful. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Glory. And uh, God, it is our joy to be your servants. It is our joy to know you. Thank you for giving us the gift of faith that yes. we could have a relationship with you, that we could commune with you, God. Thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit that we could walk in your way. Thank you for making us holier and holier each day as we seek Thank you, you God. We ask that you bless anyone who's hearing this, God. Um, if there's anyone that doesn't know you, Lord, let them just be drawn to you. Let them yes, just hear the love that we have for each other and the love we have for you. Let them be drawn and say, man, maybe I want some of what they got. Yeah. Um, and just let your Holy Spirit work in the, in the hearts of listeners, God, that you may be glorified and that more people may come to know you. That is our, that is our goal in life is uh, to make more disciples of you, Lord Jesus. We uh, have become your disciples, and that is, that is our, our call in life is to make more disciples. So yeah. let, this, yes. let this make more people want to follow you and want to follow you more closely. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we ask all these things in your powerful and saving name. Amen. 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 God. All right, guys, this was awesome. And I just want to say one last thing. No matter what happens, because the NFL is not for long, and teams and yeah. players go <laughs> different places, but you guys will always have 2017, right? No matter what happens, and you've created this unbelievable brotherhood, right? Yeah, that's it. True. Appreciate you guys on the awesome. podcast. This has been so much fun. Thank you. Take care. Appreciate it. Awesome. That was a lot of fun. We thank all of the Eagles players for joining us. Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. I think I'm required to say that now. Super Bowl champion. Philadelphia Eagles, Trey Burton, Stefan Wisniewski, Torrey Smith, Chris Maragos, Jordan Hicks, Team Chaplain, Pastor Ted Winsley. These guys may not be teammates in 2018. You know, the NFL is not for long and players move on and teams move on. But that 2017 bunch will forever be remembered by the Philadelphia faithful as one of the great teams in its, in its uh, storied history. And these guys built a brotherhood, a bond that will never be broken because this is something quite special that you could tell uh, happened in 2017, both with the injured players and with the guys who were able to stay healthy throughout the year. So thanks to the Eagles players for sitting down and taking the time to spend with us. And we thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. As always, you can reach us on Twitter at sports underscore spectrum. You can reach me at Jason Romano and you can email us Jason at sportspectrum.com. Let us know what you think of the podcast. Let us know what you thought of this interview. And let us know if you have any ideas for future guests here on the podcast. And as always, take this podcast and share it. Share it to your Facebook page. Share it to your Twitter page. Share it to Instagram. Take a screenshot. Whatever it is, if you like this interview, 
Share it with your people, your friends, your followers, and let them know about the Sports Spectrum podcast and let them know about this interview particularly, the, the very unique interview, the first time we've ever done an interview with six different people at the same time. But let them know. Go to your social media pages and let them know about Sports Spectrum. Thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. We'll see you next time right here at Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. <laughs>